Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to Brooklyn Queens Catholic Youth Day. Woo, woo. Uh, so I'm joined. My name is Brandon. This is Lauren. My name is Lauren. And um, yeah, let us know how, how you guys doing. Like, what's up? Yeah, go ahead, comment right now. We'd love to hear how you are doing on this lovely Saturday afternoon. So, Brandon, it's been a hard year, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we can all admit it's been a real challenging year. And this year, I don't know about you, but this year has left me with a lot of questions. I think everybody has. Like, I don't know if you ever had the time where you, um, you just at home, watching something, scrolling, and you start asking random questions. Probably you never even, like, what, what are dogs named in the other side of the planet? Oh, what, what would happen if turtles could actually became mutants. I, I don't know. You start asking random questions online. How many of y'all do that? Anybody do that? What oh, kind yeah. of questions have you asked? Like, just type it and know what that looked like. Oh, yeah. And and then you end up, like, two hours later down this rabbit hole, and, and suddenly you don't know what question you asked in the first place. That's yeah. happening. Or you're clicking before. suggested. You just keep <laughs> clicking suggested videos, and the next thing you know, you're like, what? Where did this come from? Oh, what? yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you've had a lot of questions. I've had a lot of questions. You at home have had a lot of questions. I wonder if, you know, we're in New York, we're in Brooklyn, right? Can we go to the streets and ask some people these questions? Maybe we can get some answers that way. Hey, that'd be cool. Let's go, let's go, let's go check it out. Yeah, let's do it. Hey man, do you mind if I stop you and ask you a couple quick questions? Yeah, sure, sure. All right, so this past year has been different. Yep, definitely. And we've been online a lot. Very, very online. A lot of, a lot of streaming, you know. <laughs> Hey, excuse me, excuse me. Can I ask you a question? What's your name? Uh, Joe. Joe, nice to meet you. I'm Lauren. Pleasure. Hey, can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. First off, what's your name? Claire. Claire, nice meeting you, Claire. What is the last thing you Googled? <laughs> I don't know. Um, caterers. Caterers for what? <laughs> uh. I don't know if I even Googled it. Uh, my son's communion. What is the last thing you Googled? What is the last thing I Googled? Oh, Mother's Day. I was looking for a gift for my wife. So what would you say for you uh, was the last thing that you Google searched? Last thing I searched up was like Legos, like Lego Star Wars type stuff. What would you say for yourself is probably the last thing that you Google searched? The last thing I Google searched, and this is the truth, is St. Elizabeth of the Trinity. So God has been active in my life the last year. Hey, can I ask you a couple questions? Um, about what? Life? Yeah. All right, what's your name? Uh, Tony. Tony. <laughs> nice to meet you, Tony. That's great. So, question. What is the last thing you Googled? Oh, man. Uh, what's the last thing I Googled? Actually, I was going to do some errands, uh, and I Googled how far the closest White Castle is. Sorry, guys. This is kind of hot out here. I had to take off my jacket. Whew. See who's next. Excuse me, miss. Will you start? Can I ask you a couple questions? Sure. What would you say for you is, like, the last thing you think you Google searched? Oh, since the weather's getting better, I am Googling where to go on vacation. Definitely hear that. So what do you think? Like, it's been a crazy year, right? So, like, what do you think has been, like, the most searched question in the last year? Mm. I would have to say it has to be something about the vaccine, I would have to say. Something about the vaccine, I think. Um, but what would you think has been the most searched thing, you would say, maybe in the past year? Um... I feel like, is Clorox effective at beating COVID? Oh, uh, 
what to do not to get this coronavirus. <laughs> so like preventing? Yeah, how to stay safe, how to prevent it, how to keep your family safe. Um, I mean, honestly, for me, it's been a lot of restaurants and ordering food. Um, trying to take some online courses, too. So those those two things, I guess. What to watch? What to binge watch? What's to stream? You know, what YouTube videos to watch, like uh, street, uh, like Hulu on Netflix and stuff. You know, like what's trending? What's trending, you know? Yeah. How could I leave my house without really leaving it? I don't know. There you go. That's a good question, right? I think we all wrestled with that. Like, sure. how can I feel like I'm outside, but not? Let's say you have a question. You know, someone you know has a question. Would you say, like, the first thing they do, they, like, they go online? Oh, definitely. We Google everything. <laughs> and what do you think, uh, what do you think it means to, to find your purpose or to be searching for your purpose? I think finding your purpose... Um, that's a good question. I would say finding your purpose is finding something that you love to do or figuring out what you love to do and actually doing it. I think that that has the best to do with, you know, finding out your purpose and, and actually living that life. I think for purpose, you would get to intention. What is your intention in doing something or what is the goal of doing something? And I don't think there would be an answer. I think it would just give you sort of a, de a rote definition. You know, I think with COVID, it really woke a lot of people up. It woke me up to realize what's important and what's not important. And, um, you know, family and uh, being there for them and um, understanding them and also understanding other people's because many, so many people have different views and look at things in a different perspective. So I, I think my purpose for me self is to sort of encourage people and to open up other people's eyes to this whole new world that we're going through. I think it's to grow closer to God. Um, and I think in that we grow in ourselves. We become more truly who we're meant to be. I don't know if that search ever ends. I feel like uh, the older I get, um, I don't feel like I'm getting that much closer to it. So I guess I'm always searching for the purpose for myself. Um, but what that is, I'm not sure purpose where I find it the most is where I pray. It was praying especially at church. You find your purpose anytime you're in the moment, wherever you're at, fully being present and aware. And if you could do that, you're, 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 that's your purpose. And truthfully, to worry and think any further than that makes absolutely no sense because you're not there. You can't control it. Uh, and you're going to miss out whatever is in front of you. And that wherever you're at, that's where you're supposed to be. And if you're truly aware, then, you know, that's where hopefully you can feel that, you know, feel that sense of eternal life that exists right now with God and be, you know, connected. Wow. You know, they had some great answers. Some funny, some, some funny, deep, some weird, some profound. Some yeah. But some made you think. You know? Good answers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like we said earlier before this, like we've been all searching and asking a bunch of different questions. Um, so this, this time around, we're going to do this entire thing a little bit different. We're going to follow a storyline of a few teens that are asking a few questions, and they're going on this search. So um, yeah, let's step into the story. If there's anybody you relate to, um, if there's anything there that, you know, you've been in that situation before, cool. You guys could just type and continue to connect with us in the chat as we go through this story. Yeah, let's dive in. Check it out. I need to speak to someone. I don't know what to do. I need help. I'm going through a lot. I need my best friend. Why is she not answering me? Can she tell I need her? I feel so alone. My parents are leaving me. My friend won't answer me. Do I even matter? I don't know what I'm doing here. Where can I go? Does it even matter where I go?
upon your soul Hold the rags from your slumber Hear his voice as he calls As he stretches out his hand I've been researching colleges all year long. Which college fits me? I just don't know. What's my purpose?
Behind the mask, there is a frail and fragile me, enigmas closed in conundrums that the naked eye can't see. Behind the mask is concealed my authenticity. Examine my history to unravel my perplexing mysteries. Behind the mask, it isn't seen, paralyzing, piercing pain, with arrogance and self-assurance camouflaging the shame. Behind the mask is hidden my true identity. Seek and survey the signs of my obscurity. <clears throat> Behind the mask is where my insecurity hides. Like realism wrapped in riddles, you must read between the lines. Behind the mask are clothed secrets, unexplained and untold. Decipher the symbols to crack my encrypted codes. Behind the mask, you'll uncover my true expressions. Remove and reveal parodies and expose the false impressions. Behind the mask, it is hidden, my individuality, not acting out some script of who I'm meant to be. Behind the mask is obscured, my vulnerability, suppressing the mounting manifestation of the inner me. Behind the mask, it is disguised, my true reflection, underneath open wounds infected by rejection. Behind the mask is where I screen the confusion. Look close and you'll find trickery and deception draped in fantasy and optical illusions. Behind the mask, it's stifling. It's hard for me to breathe. The walls of deceit that I have built are quickly closing in on me. I am trapped behind facades of smirks and phony smiles. So may I please remove this mask, if only for a little while. Yo, know, like, there's no way I lost. Yo, know, this game is trash. I'm trash. Like, I'ma get off. I gotta go to the Zoom, too. Bro. Everything's trash right now. Man, I'm mad trash, though. Dude. I'm not gonna get into this clan or even FNCS. If I fail, yo, I'm gonna just join the Zoom link and move on. Oh, hi guys, how you doing? Hi, Noah. Um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, I wanted to bring um, such a interesting topic tonight. And as you guys know, um, you know, there's a lot of young people receiving their, their sacrament of confirmation uh, this time of year. And as you know, with confirmation, we receive the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And those seven gifts are the ones that are going to help us mm -hmm. and guide us to make... Um, Noel? Yes. Hi, Fernanda. Hi. Um, hi. Um, I think that's a good topic, but I, I feel like we should um, focus on something... Um, that's been very recent these past few years. Um, this term popular among teenagers and young adults, um, cancel culture. And it's just, it's a modern form of ostracism. And I just, I would like to talk about how that cancel culture doesn't really go with our faith. And, you know, I'm not sure if you guys have something to add. You know, I have this other topic, but definitely this is something that we should speak about. And actually something that I've been looking into for the past few weeks and, like to me, it's it's something that definitely I would like to discuss. Uh, but I want to hear more from you guys. Uh, Marilyn, you have um, something to add? I kind of want to argue about how um, cancel culture cannot really be compared to what we experience in our own faith, um, because there's a there's a great difference between cancel culture and our faith in terms of. Um, what happens to those who um, are canceled um, because of um, acting a certain way over and over again that affected others or insulted others. While um, God forgives us, um, even despite um, us committing the same sin over and over again. I think we just need to know the difference between like 
committing a crime and giving an opinion uh, that's not popular or making a mistake in a sense. Because people that commit a crime would definitely should face the law, who should face, you know, uh, a trial. And, you know, if, if, if they're condemned, then definitely should, you know, do the jail time or whatever um, punishment there is. But, you know, cancel culture, as I have come to understand it, it's something where um, people just rush to judgment, just rush to, to condemn others uh, without, you know, asking, without um, looking into what they're saying. And, you know, that definitely goes explicitly contrary to what we believe, to who God is. Um, and I just, I want to say that I myself, I'm on social media and I've seen firsthand how, just how mean people can be, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I, um, I feel like people who take part of that judgment and, you know, putting hatred on this other person for giving an innocent opinion, I feel um, that they don't take accountability. They don't have that connection with God. Like they don't know who or what God is all about, you know. And if they really understood who God was, people who are spreading kind of negativity, then they would understand that um, God is the total opposite of cancel culture, of what it promotes. Um, cancel culture promotes the um, hatred, toxicity, a, an environment where people are intolerant of other um, people's ideas, while God is a God of forgiveness, a God of love, a God of peace. So they're total, total different opposites of the spectrum. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's the point I wanted to get to is, is how like this cancel culture is so contrary to our faith. So contrary to, you know, what we read in the Bible, that God is a God of second chances, that we have an opportunity to come to God to be forgiven in the sacrament of uh, confession. Um, and this cancel culture, in a sense, is saying like, no, you made a mistake and that's it, you're done. And definitely, that's not something that we believe. And um, I think I believe as you know, Catholics and, and you guys as young Catholics who are out there, uh, you know, should make the difference. Should you know educate others as to you know who the God that we serve is? Um, and our God is a God of love, a God of forgiveness, a God of second chances. And that's the God that we have to portray, you know, in our everyday life because. I think we have enough hatred in this world and we really should be spreading the love. Well, um, thank you guys so much for being here and bringing this topic. So God bless you guys and have a great rest of your day. God bless. Bye. Hey everyone. Uh, my name is Father Jose Diaz. I am a priest for the Diocese of Brooklyn. I'm here at St. Leo's Parish where you see me now. This is my parish. I've been here for three years. I've been ordained for three years. And I just want to take some time um, to just speak to you guys about, about Jesus, right? This is why we're here. This is why you're watching is to, to, to just take some time to allow the Lord to be present in your hearts. Um, I grew up where I am and I'm very happy to be here. And I'm very happy to speak to you now because I think that what we're experiencing uh, in these days is, is just is tough, you know, for you, for me. I think we've all been going through a lot, right? I was talking uh, to someone uh, about two days ago, and this person told me, Father, I just, it's just been too much. At home with everybody, it's just overwhelming. It's so hard. My patience is, is not as it used to be. I'm getting into more arguments with my family members. And then you got the flip side, people who, who are, they're okay, right? But I think we've all been going through a lot. And, and I think it's something that we need to take time to reflect about. Because if not, we lose our way. You know, the pandemic is, 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 is still going on. Everybody's going their own route or people are not reaching out to each other. Everybody's kind of found themselves in different situations. And yet me as a priest, I see especially young people struggling through this. And that's why we've decided to take this time to give you some hope. Hope that is not just, you know, some words of encouragement and motivation for its sake, but hope in a faithful sense. 
hope that is generative, hope that gives you life. And so today we speak about coming to the source or returning to the source. And I think it's a beautiful reflection for you and for me where in the midst of all that's going on, we take time to reflect upon our own hearts and say, hold up. What is motivating me or who is motivating me? Am I motivated? Am I looking hopeful for the days to come or have I lost that sense of hope? You know, we in discussing this, this whole event for you all have spoken about what's been going on in the world and we've kind of looked at what's going on by practically searching the most asked questions on Google uh, over the past year during the pandemic from young people. And it's, it's a little, I don't want to say disturbing, it's just alarming uh, that it wakes us up to what's going on in the world. And maybe you find yourself as, as one of these people who have asked questions such as these that I'm going to bring up. And I'll just bring them up um, generally, uh, the th three questions that I think, um, I think is important for you to hear. It might not have been in these exact words, but they have to do with this, this sentiment. And again, you might find yourself there. And so we'll talk a little bit about returning to the source. And these questions are, do I even matter? What's my purpose? What if I fail? Right? So these are the three that we've kind of looked at and, and, and put into words. Do I matter? What's my purpose? What happens if I fail? Something that I've realized upon reflecting on these questions is that there seems to be this operating in fear aspect that we're living today. We, we, we operate in fear. And I think that's not healthy for you or for me. That's not who God wants us to be. And I think that's what happens when we lose hope and when we forget who we are. Extremely important. It's about remembering who we are and remembering who reminds us who we are and that's Jesus that's why we go to mass that's why we pray that's why we take time to reflect to meditate to seek the Lord to allow him to be the one who gives us inspiration who generates life in us who gives us hope that tomorrow will be okay he is the source of life literally for you and for me and so I think Remembering who we are today is remembering who the source is and who our lives, your life, is rooted in. It's rooted in Jesus. And my identity is rooted in Jesus and who I am. I am a son of God. You are a son or daughter of God, right? There's that relation, that intimacy, that affiliation that takes place where we understand and know that we're loved, that we are not the sum of our failures or our weaknesses. Let me tell you something. I hear this a lot and it scares me. I get, a, I get this all the time. In fact, I got this a few days ago. This self-hate, this I'm not good enough, this I don't look like this other person or act like this other person. I'm not cool enough. I don't, I'm not expressive enough. I'm not... X, Y, Z, you fill in the blank. And so we operate in fear. And the key is when we remember who we are and know who we are and are rooted in the source of life, who is Jesus, we remember and know that we are not the sum of our brokenness, that God loves us unconditionally. And that all we're doing when we compare ourselves to each other, to one another, is we're just hurting ourselves mentally, socially, even physically, which has been happening a lot. The statistics show that the number of self-harm is through the roof, especially amongst young people. And so I think today I invite you to remember who you are, to know who the source of life is, to not operate in fear and not allow the situations of this pandemic to impact your life in a negative way. A few weeks ago, a young, uh, uh, one of our young parishioners, he's about 15, a good kid, him, his brother, um, he comes to me, I'm in the rectory, 
and he says, I say, yo, what's going on? How you doing? How's your family? And he's like, oh, you know, everybody's okay. My brother's okay. I'm like, how are you? And he, <laughs> he goes, I don't know. That was, his, that was, his, I was like, what are, what are you doing? Why are you giving me that reply, that response? He's like, I'm bored, father. You're 15 years old. Learn how to learn how to play guitar, or 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 go do a puzzle, or or go do something. Learn a hobby. Like don't don't just sulk in your own sadness. What do, you know? And so th this is the point to 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 get up, to not get lost in the sauce, as they say. To think that oh my gosh, I can't go outside or I can't see somebody, so there's no point to living. No, that's not true. It is not true. Right? When we know who we are, we find sense and meaning in life. And our meaning in life is not dependent on what we do. Right? It's our identity as sons and daughters of God. And that in and of itself gives me hope. And I hope it gives you hope. Because as, as we can take time to, to reflect that, that, that hope can lead you to recognize that as you go through your days, as you deal with the pandemic situation at home, as you look within your own heart, as you do all these things, you can say to yourself, all right, just because I don't go out or just because I'm not physically moving or just because I don't see certain people or there's not that connection as there was, that doesn't mean that I'm that my life is meaningless. I have people around me that love me, that I love. Yeah, there no relationship is perfect. Right. But every day we can appreciate if we just open our eyes and open our minds. And so when we stop operating in fear, we're able to look outward and see who's around us, right? And so I want to read just uh, from the scriptures, and then from there I'll end just saying a, a quick, a quick um, uh, moment from a movie that impacts my life that I love and is probably my favorite movie out there, funny enough. So we hear from the Gospel of St. John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where we, you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Jesus is reminding us about who we are, that our life does matter, that we don't worry about failing because we're not people who operate in fear. We are people of hope. And that hope is in this person who is Jesus. I think about, to end, I'm assuming all of you or most of you have seen the movie, The Lion King. I love this. I say this all the time. I think it's powerful. If There's so much that goes on in the movie that I can talk about all day. But I think... The movie really is about redemption and restoration. And there's this moment where, you know, Simba, because of everything that happened in his life, his father passes away. Scar, being the voice of the devil, says, run, run. Look at your shame. Look at all the evil you've done. Look how bad you are. Run. And he runs. And then he's like, oh, Akuna Matata, right? I live my life however I want. Nobody can tell me what to do. It's our problem-free philosophy. I do however and whenever, and nobody can tell me what to do or live my life. And yet, that mentality, Simba forgot who he is. And so when Nala comes to him and sees him, and she says, whoa, what are you doing? Come back home. Your family needs you. Don't you know? You are the king. And he's like, nah. He's too caught up in his brokenness. He's too caught up up here in his own mistakes. And he can't see past that. And then comes the crazy guy. 
Rafiki, who I say is the priest, so is me. And he comes and he slaps him on the head and he says, let me show you, your father is alive. And Simba's like, wait, what, what, where? And he just starts running and going and he takes him to, the, to that like lake or to the water and he says, look, and Simba sees himself. And he, oh, this guy, man, charlatan, that's what he is, right? And, 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 and Rafiki says, no, 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 look. And so powerfully in that moment, there's that recognition that Simba is the son of Mufasa and his identity as king is rooted in his father. And so our identity is rooted in our father in heaven who sees us and loves us unconditionally and even through our own brokenness reaches out to us to pull us out of that mess and to show us the way who is Jesus. And so what happens there is that at that moment in the sky, you see the cloud of Mufasa and he says, Simba, he says a few words, but the famous words, Simba, remember who you are, right? And I, it sounds funny me saying it, but those words right there are powerful because if we know who we are, we don't get caught up in the things that might bring us down daily. But we have hope in Jesus that things will be okay. We have hope that our hearts can be healed. If there's anything you're going through right now, if there's anything you're struggling with, if there's any situation that you're living at home that is rough for you, remember who you are and allow Jesus to be the one who shows you the way and heals your heart today. It's about opening your heart to him and seeking him as Simba ran and allowing the Lord to be encountered in your own life, to encounter him, right? And so Jesus is calling today. And I pray that you allow him to be the one that shows you the way, the way of hope, the way of life, not the flip side, which is the way of fear and doubt in who you are. Remember who you are. God bless you. Awesome. So thank you, Father Jose, for that powerful message. Word. Thank you to our teens who participated in this. Thank you to our, our team and everyone who's involved. Uh, we really appreciate you. Yeah, definitely. And I, I mean, shout out to Father Jose. First of all, I love the Lion King. You know, but, um, <laughs> you ever like do what, what, what those kids did and um, you want to find the wrong answer or maybe you can't find the answer. You can't find, you know, what you're looking for. Right. And, and a lot of times if you do this in school, they ask you at the end to put your sources. Right. Like where where are you getting your information from? You know, even like social media starting to do that, like starting to give your sources. Is this actually coming from a true place? You know? Yeah. And so with our questions, right? Yeah, we all have questions. We have these deep questions of our hearts, these deep things that, that we've all been carrying in this last year. And as Father mentioned, Jesus is the source. Jesus Amen. is the source for everything that we need, and we can find all our answers in His heart. And remember that your worth, your identity, is in Jesus Christ. Just amen. type an amen in the chat to that, right? Pray amen, amen. Jesus, amen. It's amen. so important to remember that our worth comes from our Lord. And so we're going to have an opportunity to dig deep in prayer together as a community all across Brooklyn and Queens and wherever you're watching from mm -hmm. today, where we can bring those questions before our Lord. We can bring anything that's been our hearts to the Lord and pour it all out, knowing that He's the source and that He has nothing but love to give us. So we're gonna dive in right now. Where can I go? 
Does it even matter where I go? God, what am I even doing here? I'm nothing but a failure anyway. I don't know why I'm here, but something tells me I have to be here, or I should be here. Just speak to me. I know I need to be here. I need God's help. Please, Lord, I need your help to make the right decision. I trust you, Lord. moment wherever you may be in your room living room get comfortable and let's spend some time with with the Lord Jesus in in his humility has come down in the form of bread and he stands before us here let us take this time to worship to praise if you have any prayer requests, you can type it in in the chat. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts that we may be able to listen to what God wants to say to us, that we may be able to pour ourselves out in worship and praise. We were created to worship Him. We were created to praise the beautiful name of Jesus. here before us, body, soul, and divinity. Thank you, Jesus. with God the Lord most high. 
We want to know you. We want to praise you. We want to be close to you, Lord. Show me who you are, Jesus. Tell him all that's on your heart, all that's on your mind. Again, if you have a prayer request and you want to type it in the chat, the Lord is here for you. This beautiful name of Jesus. He is here for you. He is here for me. He is here for us. Death could not hold the veil tore before you silence the bones of sin and grave. The heavens are Beautiful name it is. 
What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. We're going to sing that out to the Lord. We're going to sing what a beautiful name it is. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in speaking out his name and singing out his name. There is power in his name. Believe that. So if you believe that where you are, in your room, we're going to sing that out to him. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my king, and declare that he is your king. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacraments of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit who sold it. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. guys for engaging that whole time for praying thank you Alva for leading us and the whole team our whole worship team for leading us in worship and prayer in this time mm -hmm. if there's anything you guys commented in the chat um just know that one god heard your prayer you know what i'm saying um if there was anything that maybe you didn't write but it was in your heart and you maybe you didn't even have words to it cool just spend this time offering it to him um just know he heard your prayer and know that we're hearing your prayer and we're continuing to pray for you you know amen absolutely so this is a lot to process, right? And some stuff may have gotten stirred up in your heart today mm -hmm. that you want to continue to talk about, maybe with your youth minister, with your DRE, with your catechist, with your volunteers, right? Yeah. So all of them have been sent this awesome packet of resources to help you and to, and to have small group discussions with you. So we encourage you in your parish to have these conversations. Keep it going. Today's just the beginning. Yeah, so think about it. I know sometimes 
even, you know, you go to a youth night, sometimes you watch a movie and you have this experience, right? You have this thing and you don't know what to do next with that. So we want to help you guys. So again, what Lauren said, it's in the description. They've been given to you. Some of them are apps. Some of them are, are worksheets. Some of them are some practical steps you can take um, in helping to walk with you. Um, in this next season of your life, of our lives. Yeah, so be sure to check out all those awesome resources in the description below or ask the people at your parish for them. We're here to help you and to walk with you and you're in our prayers. And we just want to say again, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Know that you are loved. You are not yeah. alone. Jesus is the source of everything you need and we're praying for you. Yeah. God bless. Peace out. Unto the devil, unto the devil, unto the devil, unto the devil.